<laughs> Mr. President Jones, Administrative Council, faculty, staff, and students, I am indeed humble that you would honor me by fixing my name on the CTM Auditorium. I wish to thank all of my colleagues and friends who have taken time out of their busy schedules to congratulate me on this special occasion. Oftentimes like this, when you're being honored, you tend to focus, you tend to focus on giving thanks to everyone who has played a significant role in your life and to your success, but save thanks for those who are the closest to you. Even worse, and I know Dr. I know the president can even agree with me on that. Even worse, sometimes you forget to thank them all together. Well, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to start out by thanking those who have supported me through all the ups and downs that this life has thrown at me. Having said that, I thank my wife for 58 years plus some months. for encouraging me and supporting me. You truly have been the wind beneath my wings. Thank you so much. Also, thanks to my two sons and their families for being here to congratulate their dad. I have four sisters and a brother who could not make it here, but they did send their well wishes. I wish to thank my nieces and nephews who have come, some of whom have come long distances to be here. Thank you all so very, very much. Now, I'd like to thank my CDEF family. I tell you, the first person to speak to you was Dr. Jackie Hodges. Well, the second person, sorry about that. She has been by my side with the CDEF program for 33 years. Patrice McGee has been with me for 18 years. Ms. Lisa Rashidi, program coordinator for 14 years. Dr. Dietrich Carr, if he is here, I think it's 27 years. And Dr. Wong has also been with me, I don't know exactly how many years. He is the engineering person. I thank my fellow Archon of the Boule, the Akusa, and my Alpha Phi Alpha brothers. Last but not least, I sincerely thank the graduates who gave reflections on their journey through CDEP. Every time I see each one of you all, I realize how blessed I am to have had you to choose CDEP. I thank each one of you all so very, very much. I would guess that most of you are here to kind of congratulate me on the success of CEDA. In my hand, and I bought this here, in my hand is the infancy of CEDA. Wow. Right here. If I hadn't gotten this, you wouldn't be here. <laughs> I wouldn't either. Did you take it? It's a request for a proposal from the U.S. Department of Energy. It came out of the Office of Economic Impact and Diversity. As I peruse this RFP, I said to myself, wow, if I can get this program to work, it can become a game changer for FPSU and its students. Mm -hmm. I wrote the proposal and it was funded July 1, 1983. By the way, there are three other HBCUs who were awarded the CDEP grant. Howard University, Tennessee State University, and Central State University of Ohio. Their programs ended three years later in 1986. 
CDEP was implemented as a minority student summer energy internship program during the summer of 1984. And it is called phase one. That's the first group. Over the next eight years, several hundred students participated in phase one. Although highly, the program was highly successful, that is the internship program, as an internship, I knew that the program needed to be a STEM-based program. And the, the STEM-based program needed to be disciplines that are important to the energy uh, industry, such as engineering, geology, and geophysics, and health physics. The challenge was FBSU did not offer any of those disciplines, which meant that I would have to form partnerships with predominantly white universities. Partnerships were formed with the University of Nevada, Las Vegas for engineering and health physics and the University of Oklahoma for geology and geophysics in 1992. These dual degrees consisted of students majoring in biology, chemistry or math at Fort Valley and engineering and health physics at UNLV and geosciences at OU. The oil and gas industry, those companies became partners by providing internships and funds for scholarships. Also, I had to write proposals as well to assist with the funding of the program. The first dual degree class was recruited in 1992, which was the beginning of phase two. One year later, CDEP formed the STEM pre-college pipeline, a feeder program, the Mathematics, Science, and Engineering Academy, better known as MC, in 1993. For eight years, the CDEP consortium of universities consisted of FBSU, UNLV, and OU. Georgia Tech, as you've heard, was added in 2000, followed by the University of Texas, Austin, in 2004, Penn State University in 2005, University of Arkansas in 2010, University of Alabama in 2019, and Grand Valley State University in 2021. In closing, partnering universities have awarded 189 degrees in engineering, geosciences, and health physics, and FBSU has awarded 272 degrees in biology, chemistry, and math for a combined total of 461 bachelor degrees. This does not include the many graduate degrees that they have received. CDEP has awarded over $20 million in scholarship, expended over $5 million on its pre-college MC program, and has enrolled several hundred students which have increased the university's funding from the Board of Regents, the enrollment of higher achieving students enhanced the university's admission standards. CDEP students' retention and graduation rate exceeds the 95 percentile. CDEP students' interns have earned millions of dollars to supplement their education. The CDEP graduates have earned millions of dollars to contribute to generational wealth <coughs> for their families. My father, and I, I didn't know, I, didn't, I haven't really said this to my to my family, but it's always been there. My father always used to say that if you build the best mousetrap, the world will be a path to your door. <clears throat> well, let's see if that is working for CDEP. Today, FBU had on its campus three of the world's largest oil and gas companies. Exxon Mobil, Chevron, Shell, also Georgia Power and Geosynthetic, as well as Google. We were honored to have two chancellors of major universities, Dr. Charles Robinson, Chancellor of the University of Arkansas, and Dr. Robert Jones, Chancellor of the University of Illinois, both African Americans, and represent first African Americans to serve as chancellors at their respective universities. Footnote here is that Chancellor Robert Jones is an alum, FBSU alum, that majored in agronomy, and I had the honor of teaching him 
in botany classes in 1970s. Who else was here today? <coughs> oh, two black female executives from Chevron, Josetta Jones and Alicia Green. Also in attendance today are Mr. Rodney Henry, CEO of Amola Automotive US, USA Electric Vehicle, and his partner, Mr. Eric Pettis. Imola is planning to build a plant in the Fort Valley, Peach County uh, area that will employ 7,500 employees. <laughs> Just imagine what impact that will make on our university and this area. We also had representatives from seven major PWI, Georgia Tech, Grand Valley, Penn State, Alabama, Arkansas, University of Nevada, Las Vegas, and the University of Texas. They all have beaten a path to the Fort Valley State University. Did they come to see Dr. Crumley? The answer is a resounding no. <laughs> they all came here to FDSU to recruit and hire students from the CDF program. <laughs> In my comments today, I have minimized the use of the personal pronoun I, because it is not about me, but it's about the CDF program, the students, and Fort Valley State University. Henry Ford was the founder of the Ford Motor Company. He and all of his close friends have now passed on, but the Ford cars are still going on with his name on it. Now, as a matter of fact, I'm told that the Ford 150 truck outsells all other models and makes in America. Like everyone else at this naming ceremony today, all of us will pass on, but it is what each one of us will leave behind for generations to come is what counts. That's right. I thank you for honoring me today at this naming ceremony, the Isaac J. Crumley Auditorium. I am deeply moved by your presence and your support. Thank you very much.